All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. I got one more piece of equipment that we want to go over today, and that's going to be some more products from my friends over at Ashmer. I've got their new enclosure, uh, which I have found some pretty good things about it. We'll go over that shortly. And they've sent me the air assist that goes with the P1. Uh, now, normally I do my testing with Shop Air, but since they want me to try out their air assist, they've sent it over, and we're going to be running the Ashmer. P1 air assist with the Ashmer machine. This whole setup, pretty much everything is from Ashmer, and we're just gonna see how it, do, how it does. Now, because I do wanna test this enclosure because there's some unique features about it, I've got an exhaust line piped outside, and uh, we're gonna do some testing and see how this thing holds up. All right, guys, so just to go over it again, uh, I did a review on the Ashmer, and I've also did some, uh, some videos on setting it, adjusting everything, and we just got through with a video about doing some tumblers with it and the rotary that they sent. Uh, I'll drop links to all that down below. If you're interested, you can go check that out. But this video is gonna focus on the air assist uh, and the enclosure. The unique thing that you'll notice about this enclosure versus some of the ones that I've seen in the past is most of your typical cloth enclosures, this is what you get, okay? You get a top with a window, frame, and then you just set it over the top of the machine. And that works, and in, in most environments, uh, you know, it would be acceptable. I've used them, they work pretty well, but this one's unique in the fact that it actually has a bottom. And there's only one other cloth enclosure that I've tested that had a bottom like that. And it done a really good job of maintaining, you know, keeping the smoke out of the out of your, your room or your building or wherever you may be. And not everybody is in a building like I am. And so I know that's important to you guys as far as being able to contain the smoke and pump it outside. So I have pieced together several hoses. Uh, this enclosure does come with a fan. Everything zips up so it's completely sealed. And what we're gonna do is I've got a logo in here I'm gonna burn. And I'm just trying to make as much smoke as I can to try to test this system to see if it contains the smoke and does it get it outside where it needs to be. And there's also a cut uh, associated with this. And I'm gonna be running the uh, Acemer Air Assist here for that. Uh, the only thing that I've seen so far is I'm not real crazy on the location of the, the power. So you're gonna wanna plug this into a power strip or something to give you a little more lead way here. Uh, Cause you only get a couple of feet of, uh, of length, but you know, you could, you could add an extension cord or a power outlet block and uh, fix that. Uh, it does have variable speed, which I do like. This is very similar to some of the other brands that I've used uh, where you can set it to full power as far as the air or you can turn it off all with the same knob. And you can actually attach that to your workspace and it's pretty easy to just roll it one way or the other. So, uh, okay with the design, just kind of wish that it'd give us a little more cabling to work with. But, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll get this thing zipped up because what, I've, what I have done is I wanted to leave it like this to show you, but the way that it sits, when it sits down, it has a zipper, uh, much like a tent. It's got, you know, two zippers, one on either side. You got it under the edge. And you just kind of zip it around to the front. Uh, so once I've got the thing zipped up, on the back corner back here, there's this little Velcro pouch where the, where the wiring goes in. And on that pouch, there's three or four extra holes that are probably about an inch in diameter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave an, about half of that uncovered so that it has a fresh air intake on that side and exhaust on this side. The fan is plugged up and running. So when I seal this off, you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the enclosure let me move the camera where you can see that because this is pretty neat. Just, I want to show you something too because when you're, when you're dealing with these cloth enclosures, one thing you have to consider is the amount of airflow that you have going out. You need to have at least that much airflow coming in because if not, this is what's going to happen. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to close off the air holes over here and watch, watch the top of this machine, watch the top of this enclosure when I do. You see how it's kind of trying to vacuum seal it? It's sucking it down. Well, that's putting unnecessary strain on the fan. So what you want to do is you just want to leave that to where it's getting enough air. And you can usually feel with your hand 
over the inlets and just make sure there's enough air coming out of there. Uh, you don't want it sucking the thing together like a vacuum seal bag. So I've got it in there, got all that going. Uh, I'm going to wait on running the air assist right now because this is mostly an engrave. I don't want to scorch it up too bad, but I am going to turn it on just enough to keep the lens clean. Uh, because I do think that anytime you're running a laser, it's, it's good to have air passing through there to keep that smoke from going up inside the nozzle. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this burn. It's going to take a few minutes, but we're just going to kind of watch and see what happens with the... Uh, with the smoke, because like I said, I do have the tube. I've got some duct work put together and I've got the tube all the way out to the other side of the shop. So what you're gonna watch for here is on these vents in the back, I can still feel that I have positive pressure. Air's being pulled that way. So that means that it's doing what it's supposed to uh, on that. So this little Velcro flap right here, uh, it serves a couple of purposes. One is you can actually attach this to keep any glare from coming out. You can still kind of you can still kind of touch the corners and allow this to stay open. Uh, or, you know, if somebody approaches from this angle, this flap will reflect the light back so you don't have to worry about any, any kind of splash. But I, I have found through experimentation that just kind of leaving these two sides open and letting that thing sit like that provides plenty of airflow. And so far, no smoke seeping out anywhere. Uh, the wiring for the fan comes in from the back, it's a USB powered fan, and this is it right here. And it plugs into the back. So, I mean, there's a little, I could smell a little bit of the smoke. There's a little bit of a smell, but there again, I'm only venting it out the front of the garage door. So there is that possibility that it's, you know, blowing back in. All right, guys, so this is the other end of the hose. Uh, and as, I don't know if you can see it in the, can you, can, I don't know if you can see it in the uh, video or not but the smoke is coming out this way. Now this is kind of choking it down because this is more of like a two and a quarter inch pipe, but there is definitely lots of smoke being discharged from here and it's staying clean inside the shop. So it's working. Uh, one thing that you could do to kind of expedite this as well is if you put an inline fan over here and had it pull from there to here, uh, that would take some of the pressure off of that little fan. But so far it is gassing outside and it is not coming into the shack. So back over here at the, uh, at the machine, and I will say too, guys, this does have the orange plastic cover, but I try to still wear my glasses just in case. Um, I'm sure that Acemer, when they put this on here, making it yellow like that or orange like that, the, the, the thought was to stop the laser. And with the glasses off, I can still see a little blue light. So I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be looking at that a lot. I think this is just uh, kind of a, in my opinion, I would treat this as just one more layer of protection, but I would still wear the glasses uh, because you can actually see blue coming through it. It's the same material I'm sure is, is on a lot of the other enclosures and they will tell you that it's laser safe. And, and that's probably true. It probably does bring it down to the level of uh, light emission that is safe for your eyes. But I'm just gonna kind of let this thing sit here and run and finish, but so far, very, very minimal smell of burning wood, which is good because this engrave is actually pretty intense and there's a lot of smoke going out the pipe over there. So, so far it gets a good score on maintaining the smoke. So if you're one of those guys that's like in an apartment complex or apartment building and you need a, a way to you know, keep from smoking your house up, then uh, the bottom in this I think gives it an advantage because you have more control over the air coming into the unit, which creates that vacuum as it goes through there, as opposed to if the whole bottom is open, it, lets, it can let so much air come in if you don't have enough flow going out that you'll actually start to see smoke come out from under the enclosure. So we'll let that run and we'll uh, see how it holds up. All right guys, so after about a 15, 20 minute burn, I will say that the machine definitely contains the smoke really well. Uh, didn't have any problems with that, despite my engineered duct work and slightly restricting the fan. It did a good job. Uh, I, I, first time ever out of a cloth enclosure, you know, this size that I've had one with a base in it. So that worked out really well. Now, I just realized that I forgot to change the speed on my 
cut, so my engrave did not cut out appropriately, but it worked really nice. So other than the, other than the overside of that, uh, it worked pretty well. So I'm gonna do one more, set the proper cut speeds. We'll definitely have a chance to make sure the smoke stays in this time because this is gonna be a much smaller version of the one that I did, but uh, it, it just still gonna have the cut, which like I said, I didn't run enough adequate power on that last one, it didn't cut all the way through. I keep forgetting that this is a 10 watt. It performs much better than most 10 watts, but, uh, and I didn't have the air assist turned up on the cut, so. I'm gonna run that one more time and then I'll crank the air up once it finishes the engrave. All right guys, so uh, another successful burn with no smoke getting out of the enclosure. So we'll call that success. Uh, I actually did run adequate power even with the low air output this time. And so got my, my little burn done. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a, a plus on the, uh, the enclosure. That part definitely functions as it should. So now what I wanna do is I am going to make two cut tests to test this machine. Uh, one cut test, I'm gonna run no air assist. One cut test, I'm gonna run their air assist. I'm gonna put it on full and compare the two uh, results. And I'm also gonna be running the enclosure while I do just to keep the smoke out of the shop and uh, give it a little more testing as well. All right, guys, I did the uh, little power test. This is just a little pre-filled uh, 10 watt power test that I do on a lot of the machines and there's the results and as you can see uh, the side over here this is going to be with the air assist and this is without air uh, you can see obvious difference in the cleanness of the cut and the fact that this side you had only one cut that went through and that was at three millimeters per second we're you know at that one speed this is uh, three millimeters per second at 80 percent power uh, and then on the back side, that's what I wound up getting. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not real sure why the 80% went better, went through better than 100%, but that's what happened. Uh, whereas the other side, you can see I got a lot, a, a lot more penetration through there. That's just a single pass though. Uh, I could have done multiple passes, but I just wanted to show the obvious difference between with air assist and without. Uh, the air assist does do a good job of keeping the, keeping the cut clean and making the work look a lot better. Uh, so that's the big bonus that you get is the cleanliness of the cut plus like I said it does help in cutting ability and the ability to make it through the material so as far as this part goes the air assist seems to be doing its job and doing what it's supposed to so now guys uh, I want to test this uh, enclosure here to see if the enclosure build, lives up to the hype as well and one of the things about these enclosures is they're supposed to be flame proof flame proof and uh, should be able to help prevent a fire so one of the things I like to check to make sure before I tell you guys is will it burn or will it not so let's grab some heat so what I like to do is go a little overboard So, all in all, guys, that's, uh, that is successful. Uh, it does smoke a little bit on the outside. kind of smells a little bit like rubber on the outside. But other than a little bit of dark coloring right there, uh, it, didn't, it didn't catch on fire. All right, guys, as you can see, uh, the excessive amount of heat that I exposed it to, it did actually manage to basically caused the outer coating to uh, turn white and uh, made the outer coating kind of flake off but the fabric material is still intact and none of the fire came out it did not burn so uh hey it works other than it's got a little scuff mark on it now 
All right, guys, I hope that was informative on the products that, uh, that I was sent. Like I said, the air assist comes with multiple uh, adapters and nozzles that would fit separate machi different machines. Uh, you've got little you know, brackets that you can use to put it on most any machine. Uh, specifically, it's got this little guy here, uh, this more of a, like a universal type clip mount that you could actually just take a zip tie and put that on the side of your <clears throat> laser module. Using a, you could use a zip tie, put this on the side of your laser module using the zip tie, and then you can connect the hose here and kind of have that angled air assist. So if you have a machine that, that's not really engineered for uh, air assist, you could take this kit and uh, make it to where it would, it would have. Uh, one of the nozzles that were included is very similar to some of the other machines that I have. Uh, and this slides over the nozzle of the little brass rings that are in there. And so that would work with that. Uh, it also comes with this, uh, this extra one, which I'm not 100% sure <laughs> where or when you would need this one. But it's just one more little mountain bracket that you can use, uh, I'm guessing, to go along with this little guy. Uh, and you could come up with, you know, different mounting uh, methods. So as well as the enclosure, as long as the machine's around a 400 by 400 millimeter work area, most machines would fit in it. Uh, I would have to go back and look at the, the complete inner dimensions. Uh, it will fit uh, the Kentock, a few other machines that I have around here the uh, X tool, some of the, you know, most of the 400 by 400 frame machines would fit in the enclosure. Uh, and if you're interested, like I said, there will be links in the description below and you can go check those out. And uh, like I said, this is my honest review of these things. I could bore you all day with the science of it, but I like to just get them in here, check out functionality, make sure it works the way it's intended to and go from there. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.